हेलो टू ऑल टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज विच आर बेस्ड ऑन प्लांट एनाटोमी फॉर द नीट एग्जामिनेशन दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इन दिस यूनिट यू नो वेरी वेल दैट द टिश्यूज द सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ और टिश्यू सिस्टम एंड द इंटरनल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द रूट स्टेम एंड द लीव्स आर स्टडी so it is the backbone of the biology and questions are asked in the examination so here are some important questions based on the plant anatomy and number one is autumn wood can be differentiated from spring wood by you know very well that there are two types of the woods one is the autumn wood and another is known as the spring wood autumn wood is the wood which is formed in the winters also called as the late wood and the spring wood is formed in the summers and it is also called as the early wood all right now the autumn wood the in the autumn wood the vessels and the tracts which are formed are narrow in diameter why because in the autumn season the plant requires less water so for the conduction narrow vessels and tracts are formed but the spring wood which is formed in the summer you know very well that the rate of the transpiration is too much high in the summers and plants require more water so therefore to conduct more water in the summer season the vessels which are formed in the spring wood the vessels and the tracts formed in the spring wood will be broad in diameter but the question here is that autumn wood the question is for the autumn wood that autumn wood can be differentiated from the spring wood so the chief difference how you will be differentiating between the autumn wood and the spring wood so always the autumn wood is having the narrow diameter of xylem uh, vessels and tracts while the spring wood the vessels and the tracts formed in the spring wood have more broad diameter so the answer of the question number 1 will be that the autumn wood can be differentiated from spring wood in having narrow vessels and tracts all right so question number 1 is having the answer b i think so this question is clear now collateral collateral vascular bundle you know very well collateral vascular bundle is the feature of stems fine open vascular bundle what is a open vascular bundle a vascular bundle which has cambium in it and the presence of the cambium is the feature of the dicot all right dicots and u steel what is u steel a uh, a steel in which a steel in which the vascular bundles are found in a ring the steel in which vascular bundles are found in a ring is called as the u steel so u steel is the feature of the dicot stem open vascular bundle is also the feature of dicot stem and collateral vascular bundle is the feature of the stems all right so dicot stem monocot stem monocot root dicot root so you can cut the root options why because in the roots radial vascular bundles are formed collateral are not formed so now the choice goes between the dicot and the monocot stem but in monocot stem the vascular bundles are vascular bundles are closed and the steel is a tecto steel in which the vascular bundles are scattered so the answer must be dicot stem that in a dicot stem the vascular bundles are collateral open and a u steel is found so the best option goes for the question number 2 is a is it clear collateral open and u steel is found in the dicot stem all right now coming to the question number 3 radial vascular bundles are found in as we know very well when we talk about the vascular bundles we know very well that radial vascular bundle is the feature of radial vascular bundle is the feature of roots all the roots no matter that whether they are monocot roots or dicot roots all roots have radial vascular bundles so now the question is radial vascular bundles are found in dicot root only dicot root no i have said that all roots whether it is a monocot or a dicot all have radial vascular bundles so only dicot root no it is incorrect 
only monocot root again it is asking only monocot root no it is incorrect because they may be found in monocot root as well as dicot root only tidophytes or roots of all vascular plants so remember this thing that roots of all vascular bundles right vascular plants radial vascular bundles are found in roots of all vascular plants all vascular plant whether it is dicot monocot or whatsoever they are found in roots of all vascular plants because we know very well that roots have radial vascular bundles so question number three is having the answer d question number four vascular tissues in flowering plants develop from vascular tissues in flowering plants develop from pleurum periplem or dermatogen or phylogen now if you are remembering this diagram what we draw in the class when we are talking about the histogen theory if you are remembering uh, when we talk about the histogen theory or when we talk about the organization of the shoot apex so to explain the organization of the shoot apex a theory was given by Henstein and that theory was known as histogen theory according to histogen theory according to histogen theory at the shoot apex at the shoot apex there are three regions if you are remembering dermatogen the outermost is dermatogen the middle one is periblem and the innermost is pleurum you know according to the histogen theory given by Henstein again I am repeating according to the histogen theory given by the Henstein or for understanding the organization of the shoot apex there are three regions in apex dermatogen, periblem and pleurum outermost is dermatogen, middle one is periblem and the innermost is the pleurum dermatogen forms epidermis periblem form cortex and the vascular tissues uh, are actually developed by the pleurum so vascular tissues in flowering plants develop from the innermost layer as it is written here innermost layer known as the pleurum so question number four question number four is having the answer a now in barley first of all you must know that barley stem is a monocot or a dicot all right whenever we do the questions of the anatomina so you must consider that whether they are monocot or dicot so in barley stem you must know that barley stem barley stem is a barley is a monocot all right so the question is from the monocot side in barley stem vascular bundles are so barley is a monocot stem so definitely in monocots the vascular bundles are open or closed so they are definitely closed and because of the closed vascular bundles in monocots there is no secondary growth happening so definitely if it is a monocot stem then the vascular bundles will be closed right and also in monocots in monocots the steel is not like this type in monocots the steel is not like this type the steel is called as a tacto steel remember this thing the steel is called as a tacto steel in which the vascular bundles are scattered this is the feature of the monocot stems it is the feature of the monocot stems that the vascular bundles are scattered and a steel with remember this thing a steel with scattered vascular bundles is called as a tacto steel so in barley stem which is a monocot stem the vascular bundles must be closed and scattered closed and radial no uh, there is stem so radial vascular bundle will not be there open no it is a monocot stem monocot stem have closed vascular bundles the answer is closed and scattered in barley stem vascular bundles are closed and scattered is it clear right so question number five is having the answer c question number six the chief water conducting elements of xylem in gymnosperms are now the chief water conducting elements of xylem in gymnosperms are the question is for the gymnosperms that the chief water conducting elements of xylem in gymnosperms are so in xylem always remember that uh, in the case of the 
in the case of the gymnosperms, remember this thing that the xylem in gymnosperms do not have vessel. So, the water in the case of the gymnosperm is conducted only by the tracheids. Are you getting? Now, remember this thing that presence of the vessel is the special feature of the angiosperm and the absence of the vessel is the feature of the gymnosperm. So, they can conduct water only with the help of tracheids. So, the chief water conducting elements of xylem, again I am repeating, the chief water conducting elements of xylem in gymnosperms are. So, the answer must be tracheids, very very important because this question was sometimes asked in the NEET examination that the chief water conducting elements of xylem in gymnosperms are tracheids. So, question number 6 is having the answer A. Now, interfascicular cambium. You know what is interfascicular cambium? First of all, the the cambium which is present in between the two vascular bundles. Interfascicular. The cambium which is present in between the two vascular bundles is developed from interfascicular cambium develops from the cells of interfascicular cambium develops from the cells of. So remember this thing that in between the vascular bundles you know very well medullary rays are present medullary rays are present which are also called as the pith rays when these medullary rays when these medullary rays remember this thing that at the time of the secondary growth at the time of the secondary growth the medullary rays or the pith rays which are present in between the vascular bundles which are present in between the vascular bundles become meristematic become meristematic how do you get it and they form a cambium between two vascular bundles and that is known as the interfascicular cambium. So, the interfascicular cambium is developed from the cells of medullary rays. Remember this thing, medullary rays are also called as pith rays. Medullary rays are also called as pith rays. So, question number 7 is having the answer B. Question number 8. Age of tree can be estimated by, you know, that age of the tree can be calculated by counting the annual rings of that particular plant or the tree. Age of age of the tree can be estimated by counting the annual rings. Alright? And remember that thing that the branch which deals with counting the annual rings, the branch of the biology which deals with counting the annual rings and knowing the age of the tree. Again I am repeating the branch of the biology which deals with counting the annual rings and knowing the age of the tree is called as dendrochronology if you have you, if you might have heard about this thing that what what i have said you that the branch of the biology which deals with counting the annual rings and knowing the age of the tree is called as dendrochronology so just i want to say age of the tree can be estimated by counting the number of annual rings counting the number of annual rings so question number eight is having the answer d so this is the answer key for the mcqs on plant anatomy part number two already i have uploaded one more part part number one you can also go in the playlist and you can do the questions based on the plant anatomy all right not only uh, i am uploading the theoretical videos of the biology but I am also uploading some MCQs uh, based on different topics which are very important and just do these questions because these questions will give you an extra edge in the upcoming NEET examinations alright so thanks a lot for watching me in the coming days we will be, uh, we'll be uploading few more videos based on theories also as well as MCQs. So thanks a lot.